But as soon as you go in, gang members from the Aryan Brotherhood come up to you if you're white and ask what your charges are. Some charges are KOS, kill on sight, so just paedophile stuff. Other charges are SOS, smash on sight. So once you got past that interrogation, then you go to the meeting, they tell you you must go to the meeting, but we will smash you for failing to represent your race. And then they explain what all the rules are. If someone calls you a punk or hits you, you just fight them on the spot or else the whole gang will smash you. You must take showers or else they'll smash you with bad hygiene. You can't go make your friends with the guards or else they'll smash you with snitching. You can't go sit at the table and the day room the racist they'll smash you with that. They're constantly looking for people to beat up because that's how they earn their tattoos. It's called putting work in to earn your political thing. The more serious the act of violence you they commit, higher up in the gang hierarchy are the tattoos that they earn. To earn this one, the Warbird, the full Aryan Brotherhood membership patch, you have to murder someone in the jail for the gang to be a full member. These are the Latino gang members. Each solid teardrop symbolises one person that he's murdered in the jail for his gang. Yeah. A lot of them are in for life. I mean, they go in as like hot smokers or the last charge and they come out heroin addicts with all these racial tattoos on them. A lot of them have got hepatitis C because they're all sharing needles. And they're like enemies of society. There's no way they can get jobs with swastikas on their faces and stuff like that. So it really doesn't work for them, you know, there should be something to educate them and rehabilitate them, I think. Well, they do all their own tattoos then, not they? They do, I had, a, I had a cellmate who was a serial home invader torturer. And he, he turned our cell into an illegal tattoo shop. He took the motor out of a Walkman, attached it to a guitar string and a needle, which he ran through the outer casing of a pen which he filed down. And the motor from, from the Walkman powered his tattoo gun. And for ink, he burns a hair gel product in a contraption that he built for hours on end. And the smoke collected and the soot was his black ink. So, I mean, these guys have got skills. You should have seen his tattoo. He had really good uh, artist, artistic skills. It's amazing. Lots of art he was doing. It's mostly young people in there, yeah. But not only were the gang members murdering the prisoners, the guards were murdering the prisoners as well. And the guards who murdered the prisoners, the sheriff, the boss of the jail, promoted them and gave them pay rises, even though millions was paid out in compensation <coughs> to their family members. Yeah. How do you pronounce the old sheriff's name? Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Arpaio. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Is there any other person yeah. on hand, did you? Well, Wildman was in there. He was one of my co-defendants. <laughs> yeah, and I was lucky that he was in there. I was lucky he was in there because he has fighting skills. And when I went in, that's what's respected. So the gang's respected him. And that's, you know, he prevented them from smashing me in the beginning. Because they had respect for him. So it's all about who you know. But if you're a young person going in for the first time and you don't want anyone, they haven't helped you. It's just pure free for all. So you get a win then. Well, you have to defend yourself if someone hits you. But if you're a big, bad, like wild man's twice my size, 20 stone guy, fists twice my size, and he knows how to fight. And so it's people like him who are the rulers in here. Yeah. He's out now, yeah, he's up in my hometown. He's only had three fights since he got out. And they were all started by other people trying to make their names by going to my hometown because they know who he is now because of the book and starting fights with him. He was, he was playing a gambling machine and two lads came and he noticed they were looking dodgy and they were getting drunk, getting the bravery up and then they attacked him and he grabbed one by, by the chin, knocked him out, into the, knocked him into the gambling machine, knocked him out, picked him one by the neck and said, do you know what I can do to you right now? And this is how wild man's changed. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you 20 quid, you're going to pick your mate up off the floor, off the floor put him in a taxi you're going to go home, you're going to give him a shake your hand and give him a hug. But the old wild man finished the job off. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm, better, I'm better than you get it. <laughs>